up, Stellar Crew? Bob MacArthur here for Stellar View Telescopes in this month's edition of What's Up? So here we are, December 2023. December's kind of a fun month. We have our late fall constellations still hanging in there, like Pegasus and Andromeda. And Andromeda's near the zenith, so the Andromeda galaxy is great to look at this time of year. But we're also getting a preview of those winter constellations that we love. We have Taurus coming up. We have the uh, constellation Orion coming up. So we have M45, the Pleiades in Taurus. We also have M42, the Orion Nebula. We all love the Orion Nebula. So in this month's edition of What's Up, we're gonna kind of talk about some other things that are coming up in December of 2023. So here we go. What's going on, Stellar Crew? Bob MacArthur here. Again, let's talk about what we got going on for December 2023 for What's Up in the Night Sky. So here's some of this month's observing highlights. Uh, we have the Geminid Meteor Shower. And this year we're really lucky with the Geminid Meteor Shower because it's happened around the, uh, the new moon. So get out there to a dark sky site, uh, bundle up with a blanket, some hot cocoa, coffee, and uh, stay up. The Geminid is a pretty good meteor shower. It, uh, it produces some really nice meteors. So again, that's December 13th to 14th. So get out there, check it out. Uh, December uh, 17th, the moon will join Saturn. Nice little crescent moon, Saturn in the, in the western sky. So love it when those two get together. The winter solstice, the first day of winter is here. Um, that is on December 21st, uh, 8.27 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. So here we go, going into winter season. And then on December 22nd, the moon will uh, be up there near Jupiter. Actually, it's going to be between Jupiter and uh, Uranus. So Uranus is uh, you know, around a sixth magnitude. So you can definitely get that with uh, your scope. And uh, even a pair of binoculars, you should be able to pull out Jupiter, the moon, and Uranus. So check that out. So uh, what do we got going on for the moon? So third quarter moon is December 4th. Uh, again, I mentioned the Geminid meteor shower being uh, the 13th and the 14th. So that is the, about the time the moon is new. Actually, the moon will be a, a thin little crescent right after sunset, uh, the nights of the Geminid. So there you go. First quarter moon is uh, December 19th, and then the full moon the day after, uh, a day after Christmas, December 26th. So uh, Santa Claus will definitely have a nice full moon guiding his way around uh, the planet. So there you go. Uh, what about the planets? What do we got going on this month for the planets? Well, Venus. As usual, super bright. It is up before sunrise. So if you want to see Venus, uh, it should be a nice, like I would say, gibbous phase. Uh, check it out as it's moving between um, the Earth and the, uh, the sun. Yep, there it is. It's going from a, a full Venus to a gibbous phase. In a few months, it'll start sliding into that crescent phase. So uh, check that out. It's always fun to track Venus as it goes through its phases. Jupiter, it is the showcase object of the season right now. Really bright. Uh, up pretty much up all night. It was at opposition in November. So um, it, it, it's up pretty much all night. So check it out. It's fun to watch those moons dance around Jupiter throughout the evening and even from day to day. Saturn's getting lower and lower in the western sky, uh, but it's still great to check out, see the rings, the moons dancing around there. Uranus, again, pretty bright. Uh, it's up there by Jupiter. And uh, it's a sixth, like a sixth magnitude, looks like a little pale green dot. Uh, through a pair of binoculars with a larger telescope, you can start resolving that nice green disk. Another fun astronomical, um, I would say, challenge would be the asteroid Vesta. It's one of our brightest asteroids. Um, it's up there. It's, uh, you'll be able to see it. Some great charts to check out. You know, Stellarium does a really good job uh, uh, showing where asteroids are. Uh, Sky and Telescope Magazine, Astronomy Magazine. Um, yeah, I think Sky and Telescope this month, actually, the December issue has a star chart where it shows the path of Vesta, so check that out. So what do we got going on for star clusters? Well, I love looking at star clusters, uh, just seeing those compact groups, or even loose groups, like the one that's in, uh, that you see here in the picture, that's M45, the Pleiades. It is starting to come up now, those wintertime constellations making their debut, and the Pleiades is just one of those wonderful groups of stars to look at. I like to call it the measuring cup because a lot of people confuse it for the Little Dipper, the Big Dipper. I'm like, nope, it's the measuring cup. Uh, so check it out. Uh, M15, the Great Pegasus Cluster, is still up there over in the western sky. Just a really nice globular to look at. Uh, for me, this time of year, you know, you got the, the, the Perseus Double Star Cluster. It's pretty high in the sky. So that's always a, a fun cluster for me to look at. Uh, it just 
it's, I really enjoy looking at it. Wide field, you can get both the clusters in there. So let's talk about some nebula. So this time of year, uh, I would say Cepheus and Cassiopeia is where the nebulas are. Uh, they're not very great telescopic nebulas, but they're great astrophotography targets. The image here is uh, of the Heart Nebula, but right up there you have the Heart and Soul Nebula, you have the Iris Nebula, both up in that part of the sky, great astrophotography targets. Um, the Orion Nebula is starting to come up, make its debut. Just like uh, M45 and Taurus, you have M1, the Crab Nebula, that's also starting to come up. So those are wonderful visual targets as, long as, uh, as well as astrophotography targets. So hit those. Those are some of the nebula highlights that we have out. Um, as galaxies go, the winter uh, sky isn't really known for its galaxies, but right now we do have the Andromeda Galaxy. Uh, early in the month, it's pretty high up, pretty, uh, pretty close to the zenith there, depending on your latitude. And uh, I, through my SVX 152, had one of the most spectacular views of the Andromeda Galaxy. I put the 28 millimeter uh, stellar view wide field eyepiece in there and it just took up the whole field. You could see the dust lanes. I was in some pretty dark skies. The Andromeda Galaxy this time of year is, is pretty spectacular. You also have NGC uh, 253, really low in the sky, but if you have some good clear skies and some really nice uh, skies looking down towards the south, I'll tell you, this, this galaxy is, is a fun galaxy to look at. You can see kind of its dust lanes and things like that. Uh, it's, check it out. It's, it's a really nice galaxy down, uh, down low in the southern sky. And then there's M74. Now, M74 and I have a, a, an interesting relationship. It, it, it tends to be a challenging galaxy for me when I do a Messier marathon. Uh, it's one of those very first objects you have to get in the spring for a Messier marathon. But this time of year, it's positioned really nice in the sky, kind of kind of uh, near the meridian. Uh, so check it out, uh, M74 in the, uh, constellation Pisces. So those are some of the galaxy highlights. There's some other fainter galaxies out there, but those are some fun galaxy highlights. Um, with my refractor, I absolutely love getting some of the binaries that we have. And some of the binaries that we have right now um, are Almach, Gamma Andromeda, Gamma to Aries. Uh, Gamma Aries is a fun, fun little close binary, but you can split it. Now, Zeta Aquarii is a little bit more of a challenge. Those things are right on top of each other. So if you have really good, clear, steady skies and you're able to resolve close pairs, uh, Zeta Aquarii is a, a really fun challenge. Um, Gamma Aries, just two nice uh, bluish white stars right next to each other. And then Gamma Andromeda, you kind of get a goldish star and a bluish star right next to each other. So fun color contrast. Um, so check out those binaries. Again, those are just a few. I mean, there are a lot of fun uh, binaries out there to get this time of year also. So I challenge you to get out there, get your scope out. Um, this time of year, it gets cold, so you're like, oh, do I really want to get a scope out? But hey, you got the family in town maybe for the holidays. Might be fun to get that telescope out, look at Jupiter, look at the Pleiades and some of those other objects. So have fun this month. Get out there, bundle up, check out the Geminid uh, meteor shower. And as always, keep looking up.